This class is an introduction to Marine Corps Junior ROTC uniforms, but will also provide a detailed history and evolution of Marine Corps uniforms from the dawn of our existence in 1775 up to our current uniforms. If you're online and you're taking this class, you need to make sure that you have your study guide up on a separate screen, downloaded or printed out, and you need to make sure that you have the textbook chapter downloaded, printed out, or up on a separate screen as well. These will provide an easier opportunity for you to follow along. Today we're going to discuss a brief overview of the various types of uniforms spanning back to the birth of our Corps in 1775 with the Colonial Marine Corps, all the way up through today's Marine Corps uniforms, some of which you wear as a cadet. For testing purposes, and for your daily routine here in the ROTC program, you need to be familiar with the history of our Marine Corps uniforms. You need to be able to describe and understand the, the wear of the different types of ROTC uniforms. And you need to be able to identify the insignia and devices and how to properly place them on your uniform. The first insignia that we'll discuss is chevrons. Chevrons are the black rank designators worn by enlisted Marines. So when you look at Sergeant Major Clark's collar on his camouflage utility uniform or the sleeves of his service uniform, those stripes up and down are called chevrons. Now, the other one we're gonna talk about is epaulets, which are ornamental pieces worn on the shoulders uh, to represent rank. So if you ever looked at a Captain Crunch box, the big shoulder pads that have the gold fringe hanging down, those are predominant Navy insignia, but there are versions of those that were worn in the past by the Marine Corps. Today, our epaulets are a piece of material on the shoulder of the dress blues or the tanker jacket or the like, and you simply place your rank insignia for officers or your chevrons for enlisted Marines on those epaulets. A couple of key words that you'll see repeated throughout this period of instruction are subdued. Subdued means to conceal unwanted reflection with the rank insignia. So most of your, like I said in the previous slide, your enlisted ranks are a black chevron. Officers are a shiny brass type material. But when they are in a combat environment or a field training environment, they have a subdued version of those. So the gold rank insignia are very flat in and brown, kind of a camouflage coyote color. And then the silver ranks for officers are also black, very similar to the enlisted ranks. That's just to prevent a shine in a combat environment. The other key word is leatherneck, which leatherneck is a nickname for Marines, but it's based from a leather piece that was worn on the uniform in the past to erect the neck and protect from saber slashes during ship-to-ship -ship fighting. Our LE1s might not be able to answer this question, but I want my LE2s to think about your current knowledge of uniforms, what you learned last year, and I want you to see, before you move on to the next slide, how many combinations of those uniforms that you can describe. So let's get to it. The word uniform comes from two Latin words, unus and forma, which simply means one form. Since the dawn of time, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in battle have needed a way to distinguish themselves from the bad guys. When these battles involved people from different cultures and countries, it was really easy to tell who was on opposing sides because the types of uniforms were very, very different. When you talk about the Revolutionary War, it was also pretty easy to identify the red coats, Britain, from the blue coats of our Revolutionary Army. From about the 1500s to the late 1800s, identification of these armies became very problematic for European armies because they were all very similar in their culture and they were all very much about pomp and circumstance. And their uniforms were, were less about function and more about fashion. And it became very hard to distinguish good guys from bad guys on the European battlefront. The development of uniforms eliminated the problem for distinguishing armies. And like I mentioned, these early uniforms were very colorful. They were more suited for a parade field than a battlefield. 
By the end of the 19th century, the realities of war were driven home and the need for functional uniforms that would conceal the wearer became more of a priority for our militaries. During World War I, we saw the bright reds and blues disappear and they were replaced with greens, grays, and khaki type colors and fabrics. These colors, patterns, and schemes continue to this day with the development of our camouflage utility uniforms. The Marine Corps has worn a countless variety of these khaki and tan and desert and green uniforms throughout the years. Our camouflage patterns and materials have also changed throughout our long and glorious history. The uniforms of the United States Marine Corps are unique and they display the pride and history of the Marine Corps itself. In our dress uniforms and our service uniforms, you'll find a lot of throwbacks and a lot of traditions that are built into the uniforms today that although they might not be as functional in a service or dress environment, they reflect the uniforms of our past. So let's talk about our past as an institution and the evolution of our uniforms. When our Continental Marines were established and organized in 1775, our uniforms consisted of green coats and white facings, white waistcoats, white breeches, short black spats, which are often referred to as spatter dashes, and round felt hats. In these uniforms, the Marines wore a, a leather neck piece, which was designed to keep your head up and maintain constant military appearance, but it was also used to protect your throat from being slashed by a saber or a sword. This is where we, the Marine Corps, got the nickname Leathernecks, and it's stuck to this day. The Leatherneck collar isn't worn anymore, but going back to what I was talking about earlier, our dress blue uniform in its current design with a high collar is a throwback to the Leatherneck worn in our previous uniforms. Now, after the Revolutionary War, the Continental Marines were disbanded in uh, 1783, but they were reformed in 1798, and you'll see a difference in the time jump. We'll also talk about the fact that the Marines were disbanded and reestablished in our Marine Corps history class. Fast forward to 1798, we're no longer the Continental Marines, we're the United States Marines. And the United States Marines wore a surplus of Army clothing, which consisted of a blue coat, a scarlet vest, tight blue trousers, and thin scarlet stripes. These are where you start to see our current dress uniforms come into play. What you will also find throughout this period of instruction is a reoccurring theme that our branches of service, specifically the Marine Corps, are known to do and perform with less. We are sometimes in receipt of the leftovers from the other services and we end up making do. The Army surplus uniform of the time is the first of many that we will modify and make our own. Prior to 1804, there were no actual formal regulations, but in 1804, they started to take note of what we had in stock and put together their actual uniform regulations in writing. During this time, the felt hat, that black one, was changed to a shako, which is the big square top hat, and then they added a pom-pom the, during the War of 1812. Again, more about fashion and less about function. But one of the things that they did add uh, to our arsenal was the Mameluke sword, which was issued to officers. The sword was a gift to Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon during the Barbary Pirates War in 1805 in North Africa, which we will speak in detail about the Barbary Pirate War and Presley O'Bannon in our Marine Corps history class. 18 years later, in 1822, non-commissioned officer chevrons were introduced. This is what we talked about in our key word, those striped type rank insignia that identify enlisted Marines. But the irony is, captains and lieutenants also wore a version of chevrons up until 1830 when they shifted to their current rank model after the Army. In 1834, the blue, white, and scarlet uniforms were put on the shelf, and we adopted green coat tees with buff facings and gray trousers. Now, a green coat tee is nothing more than a kind of a longer coat that hangs between mid-thigh 
and your knees. But in 1839, we get we went back to our traditional colors of blue, white, and scarlet because the color combination of the gray and green wasn't really popular. During the Civil War, our Marine Corps service uniform was virtually a copy of the Army uniform. And this had everything to do with the fact that money is money, especially in a time of war, because war gets very expensive. Materials become more and more scarce, so it was fiscally responsible for the Marine Corps to simply adopt a version of the Army uniform that was already in production and just modify it a little bit. It was just cheaper and cost effective. Although it was more fiscally responsible to adopt an Army uniform, the Marine Corps really missed our dress uniforms because they were an eye catcher. So towards the end of the war and post-Civil War, we decided to bring back our dress uniforms. Now we were wearing our army greens and khakis for training, but our dress uniforms were more ceremonial by this point anyway. Even privates wore gold epaulets and white cross belts. They wore high crowned hats with scarlet pom-poms. We were adamant about making our dress uniform an eye catcher for all ranks, not just our officers. This version of the uniform lasted until 1875. And in 1875, the headgear was replaced with a blue or a white spiked helmet, depending on who the manufacturer was, what unit you were with, officer or enlisted would determine what kind of spiked helmet you got. But this had more of a German reflection and appeal to it, and it didn't last very long. Also during this time in the late 1800s, we got smart about our uniforms, and there became a distinct split between our daily service or combat uniforms and our more formal or dress uniforms, which were a reflection of our 16 and 1700 European and Colonial Marine counterparts. The first field uniform was made up of a coarse gray cheesecloth type material and an army pattern of blue flannel shirts were also issued during this time frame. Part of the Marine Corps tradition ended when the leather neck piece was abolished after exactly 100 years of being worn as part of the uniform. The war with Spain in 1898 found the Marine Corps fighting in very tropical type climates. So in order for us to accommodate and change from the cheesecloth and a horse thick blanket material that our uniforms were made out of, we needed to go to a more lighter material. A new khaki linen uniform was introduced, which helped regulate uh, the body heat of the Marines fighting in the tropic. We did return to a high collar, but we replaced our boom caps with a campaign cover. This is what you would see on the drill field or drill instructors, drill sergeants are wearing today. It was simply a modified cowboy hat that protected Marines from sunburn. It became the standard field uniform for combat and training. Well, here we are at war again. During World War I, 1914 to 1918, because it was cheaper and more cost effective, the Marines who were fighting in France wore an army olive drab uniform or a version of it. Uh, the difference was ours were wrapped with cloth spiral puettes. A puette is a strip of cloth which is worn and wrapped around the lower leg in a spiral pattern. And it's worn from between the ankle and the knee. What this does, it provides ankle support and prevents debris and water from entering your boots or your pants when you're trudging through the swamps. Through our lessons learned between the Spanish-American War and World War I, between World War I and World War II, the Marine Corps and the Army's utility uniform became lighter and a bit more durable and a lot more functional. With the arrival of the utilities just prior to World War II, our uniforms basically have stayed the same or similar since then. The basic field outfit of the Marine Corps is pretty close to what you see today. Although you might have saw a little bit of camouflage in the versions of the World War II uniforms, true current camouflage wasn't introduced until Vietnam as a special item. The majority of those soldiers and Marines fighting in Vietnam had the solid green patterns of the previous years. 
in the late 1970s, it was adopted as the standard utility uniform, the camouflage. Now, up until the 2000s, the Marine Corps wore only tri-patterned camouflage utilities. The tri-pattern utilities were worn by all four branches of the service, and the idea was all we would have to do is issue name tapes specific to that branch of service. And for many, many years, you wouldn't be able from a distance to tell uh, the difference between a soldier, sailor, airman, and Marines until you got close and identified by a eagle of an anchor or a name patch. In the early 2000s, the Marine Corps specifically was the first branch of the military to adopt a digital type pattern or MARPAT, Marine Pattern utility camouflage. The other branches of the service realized how well the camouflage worked and how much better that type of camouflage was than the tri-pattern. And they eventually ended up adopting versions of their own patterned digital camis. So now that we got a brief history and the evolution of our Marine Corps uniforms, Let's talk about the Marine Corps uniforms that are worn today and which ones you're going to be wearing as an ROTC cadet. For testing purposes and for daily routine, you're going to need to understand that our uniforms are divided into three categories. You must know all three categories. The first one are your dress uniforms. If you look at the picture on the far left, your dress uniforms are any uniform with a blue coat or a combination of blue trousers. The next category are your service uniforms. Your service uniforms are a combination of the khaki shirts, green coats, green sweaters, and green trousers. The last is the utility version of our uniforms. Now, you as a cadet will not wear the tan desert Marpat camouflage digital utilities. Marines do, you don't. You'll only wear the green camouflage utility uniforms. Dress, service, and utility. Those are the three categories of Marine Corps uniforms. Of the three categories, let's talk about the dress blues or the dress uniforms first. All of our uniforms are broken down by the phonetic alphabet. So your dress blue A or dress blue alpha uniform consists of the blues blouse, blue trousers as for males and females, and non-commissioned officers and staff and COs and officers in the Marine Corps will have a red blood stripe on the trouser. Cadets used to wear a very thin blood stripe, but it became too confusing and they were often mistaken for Marines and it was eliminated just a handful of years ago. The female skirt is an optional uniform item unless you're in a formation, conducting drill, color guard, or any other ceremony. You must wear pumps, flats, or heels unless Oxfords are prescribed by the commander. The commander may prescribe trousers for uniformity. So although female Marines may wear a female skirt in their dress blues, if they are not in a formation or not doing drill, there will be plenty of, re plenty of requirements for females to wear trousers so that everyone is uniform and the same in formation. Also a part of the dress blue alpha uniform are the white barracks cover and you are significantly different in the Alpha versus Bravo uniform by wearing your medals and any ribbons that you don't rate. So the bottom line between the Alphas and the, uh, the Dress Blue Alphas and the Dress Blue Bravos is that Dress Blue Alphas, you wear medals and in Dress Blue Bravos, you wear ribbons. Other than that, the uniform items are exactly the same. Dress Blue Alphas are not to be worn for any other reason than parades, ceremonies, reviews, or other very, very formal occasions that are determined by the commander. You are not allowed, a Marine is not allowed to wear his dress blue alphas while they're out on leave or liberty. Leave is mean I, I am home away from the Marine Corps. I was allowed to leave the base and go visit family back here in Mount Juliet. Liberty is I'm off work, but I'm in the general area of where the military base is. Another occasion that Marines wear dress blue alphas uh, often is for weddings and for funerals. So here's what a dress blue alpha uniform looks like for officers. They have medals, ribbons, 
they wear a solid black belt and a red neck tab for females. You'll notice that they are wearing their medals on the left hand side. The Marine Corps, the military, I should say, has ribbons and awards that don't necessarily have a medal to go with it. So you might receive an award as a Marine, but it doesn't have a medal. So you wear all your medals on the left hand side and then whatever ribbons are left over that don't have a medal associated, you wear them on the right hand side. Now, if you notice the male uniform is different for officers than enlisted. The dress blues that you'll wear in this program are the enlisted dress blues that have a white belt, which we'll see here in a moment. The enlisted dress blue uniform is very similar to the officers with the exception of red piping. All of the trim on the enlisted uniforms has red piping. You also have medals and ribbons. And instead of a red neck tab for officers, enlisted females wear a blue neck tab. Males have a white dress belt. So the next letter is Bravo. The only difference, like I mentioned before, between your dress blue Bravos and your dress blue Alphas is that you will wear ribbons in the place of your medals. In the dress blue Bravos, 99% of the time, if you're wearing ribbons, that unit commander will designate that you also wear your shooting badges. So your rifle qualification badge and your pistol qualification badge will be worn with your ribbons. Here in ROTC, if you're wearing dress blues, this is the uniform you will wear most often. Dress blue Bravos with your ribbons, and if you qualified on the rifle range here in ROTC, you will wear your shooting badge as well. Another significant difference between the dress blue Bravos and the dress blue Alphas is that your Alphas, your dress blue Alphas are very, very formal. Not that your dress blue Bravos aren't, but I'm allowed to wear my dress blue Bravos in all the same parades, ceremonies, reviews, and formal occasions that I was also allowed to wear my dress blue Alphas in, but I'm allowed to wear my dress blues on leave and liberty. So if I am a Marine and I just wanted to wear my dress blues to church on Sunday, I'm allowed to. If I want to take my boyfriend or girlfriend out uh, for a fancy dinner and I want to show her off, him off, or myself off, and I want to wear my dress blues, then I can't wear my medals. I would only be allowed to wear my dress blue bravos with my ribbons. So here you see the significant difference between the dress blue alphas and the dress blue bravos, and that's nothing more than ribbons and badges. When I say badges, I'm talking about shooting badges. Same dress blue requirement, dress blue Bravo requirements for enlisted Marines. The uniform items are exactly the same head to toe with the exception of wearing badges and ribbons only and not your medals. The easiest way to keep track of your dress blue A's, B's and C's and D's is that you are somewhat removing an item that is more important than the one you're wearing at the moment. So dress blue alphas are the most senior uniform and you will wear them to the most important occasions. So I'm gonna wear my medals. Dress blue bravos, I will wear them to some of the same occasions, but not quite as many. So they are less important events. I would wear my ribbons. Dress blue charlies, all you're simply doing is removing that dress blue coat and you're replacing it with a long sleeve khaki shirt. You're gonna wear a tie and males will wear a clasp. Females will wear a neck tab instead of a tie. Males and females will wear blue trousers. And again, blood stripes on the trousers for NCO staff and COs and officers. Again, female skirts are optional to wear on your own. But like mentioned before, you're not allowed to wear in uniform. You're not allowed to conduct drill. You're not allowed to do a color guard or any other ceremony. The different shoe requirements are the same. And uh, if the unit leader says, hey, you're not allowed to wear a skirt because I need everyone to look the same for this formal event, then you don't wear a skirt. White barracks cover you still wear and you will wear your ribbons. You will never ever wear medals on a khaki shirt. You will only wear medals on the blue coat. 
a little less formal, I can wear my dress blues, Charlie's, as the uniform of the day. So if the unit commander and the sergeant major, the first sergeant, like, hey, on Friday, we're going to wear our dress blue C's. A lot of times this happens where we get accustomed to wearing a camouflage utility uniform for work all the time, and your unit leader was going to spring a uniform of the day, a dress or service uniform, and you're going to have to scramble to get it ready. Most Marines already have it ready. You're not allowed to wear your dress blue Charlies in parades or ceremonies where a coat would be more appropriate. It will be up to that unit leader to decide what is more appropriate. Um, your smaller occasions, your smaller ceremonies, not wearing a coat is appropriate. If the commander says, you know what, it's like 99 degrees outside and we can get away with wearing a khaki long sleeve shirt instead. So we'll wear our service, I'm sorry, our dress blue Charlies instead. You are allowed to wear your dress blue Charlies for leave and for liberty. So here we have a picture of your dress blue Charlies for your officers on the left and the enlisted on the right. Officers on the left, you can see the rank insignia on his collar. The enlisted Marine on the right, you can see Gunnery Sergeant Chevron's on, the, on his sleeves. Essentially, dress blue Charlies are nothing more than your dress blues where you take the coat off and then you put on a khaki shirt and tie. Males will have a tie clasp between their second, I'm sorry, between their third and fourth button of their shirt. Here we have a picture of dress blue Charlies for officer enlisted females. Um, if you look at the picture on the left, if she had trousers on, she would be perfectly fine to be wearing them in formation. She's not in formation, so she's allowed to wear her dress blue skirt with black neck tab. The enlisted Marine on the right has a black neck tab, although whoever took this photo should be shot because you shouldn't see the neck tab sticking out from the side of the collar like this one is. But anyway, those are the significant differences. Same thing, these ladies would take their dress blue coat off, put their long sleeve shirt and neck tab on. A, B, C, and now we're at D, dress blue deltas. The only difference between dress blue deltas and dress blue charlies is that instead of having a long sleeve shirt, I've got a short sleeve shirt. I'll wear my short sleeve khakis. I'm gonna wear a white skivvy shirt underneath so I don't see cleavage or chest hair. I'm going to make sure that I have blue trousers. I'm having the same, I have the same options for skirts as all of our previous dress blue uniforms. I'm still wearing my white barracks cover and I'm still wearing my shooting badges and my ribbons. Dress blue deltas are allowed to be worn as a uniform of the day. And they're allowed to be worn in parades and ceremonies, but if a dress blue coat is more appropriate, then you'll be told what to wear. I am allowed to wear dress blue deltas on leave and liberty. I actually graduated Marine Corps boot camp in dress blue deltas because it was inclement weather. It was overcast. We knew it was going to rain. Instead of getting soaking wet in our dress blue coats, which take forever to dry, our commander decided that we would graduate in a short sleeve khaki shirt version of our dress blues. Here in ROTC, if you are wearing dress blues, you will wear the dress blue Bravos with the coat and ribbons or the dress blue Deltas with the short sleeve shirt. And that boils down to the fact that we don't issue long sleeve shirts here in ROTC. So here you'll see a picture of the dress blue Deltas for officers on the left and listed on the right. Again, I'm just dressing down. The previous uniform, the Charlie, dress blue Charlies, had the exact same requirements for uniform. I just took the long sleeve shirt and tie off and put a short sleeve shirt and white skivvy shirt on, and now I'm in dress blue deltas. Dress blue deltas for officers and enlisted females. On the left officers, on the right females. If the officer on the left was to be put into a formation, she would simply take her skirt and change it out for blue trousers. Now, if you notice in this picture, these females do not have a white skivvy shirt on. It was not allowed up until a few years ago, but the Marine Corps got smart and said, hey, you know, our females are sweating through their shirts just as much as a male, so let's authorize white skivvy shirts to be worn underneath the khaki shirt for females. 
I personally believe that this provides a cleaner and more neat appearance and that for uniformity purposes, your commander can say, hey, if we're wearing dress blue deltas and uh, we got our short sleeve shirt on, everybody's going to wear a white skinny shirt. You will have that option here in ROTC too or not to wear a white skivvy shirt under your Charlie shirt if you're a female. It's your choice. So let's go down a little weird hole here. You won't see these uniforms here in the ROTC program, but you will see these uniforms when the Marine Corps recruiters uh, come on to campus. The dress blue slash white uniform is essentially your dress blues from head to toe, the difference is for my dress blue slash whites, I'm changing out my blue trousers and my blue skirt for a white trouser or white skirt. They're worn by only staff and SEALs and officers. Sergeants and below are not allowed to wear white trousers unless they're assigned to the silent drill team or the Marines, uh, the Marine Corps band up in Quantico. These are a summer seasonal uniform only. So a couple of things that we do in the Marine Corps with our uniforms is we make them seasonal. In the fall, we will let down our sleeves on our camouflage utility uniforms. In the spring, we will roll our sleeves. We'll talk about it later. Also, in the fall, we wear blue trousers. And in the summer, we wear white trousers. But again, this is only for staff and SEALs and officers, and it's only in the summer. Like I mentioned, they are also worn by the Marines and uh, Quantico at 8th and I for ceremonies. All uniform items and rules are identical as your dress blue A's and B's. Again, the only difference is I got white trousers instead of blue. Here you can take a quick glance from head to toe. They look identical to everything we've talked about so far with our dress blue A's with medals, dress blue B's with ribbons and badges. The only thing that they're doing is exchanging their blue trousers for white trousers, blue skirts for white skirts. When it gets cold, I can wear my dress blue A's or B's because that coat is pretty thick. But when I wear my dress blue uh, Charlie's or Delta's and I'm wearing that long sleeve khaki shirt or that short sleeve khaki shirt, it can get kind of chilly. So the Marine Corps has a dress blues sweater and a tanker jacket. You will not get issued a sweater here in RTC, but you will get issued a tanker jacket. They're prescribed by the commander. They can be worn as uniform of the day. They're here in RTC, it is it will be an issued item. But in the Marine Corps, we don't issue sweaters and we don't issue tanker jackets. If the Marines want to wear those, they gotta go buy them themselves. When wearing your tanker jacket, you're gonna make sure that you're measuring your rank insignia a quarter of an inch from the seam. You wanna make sure that that quarter of an inch is measured from the shoulder seam, where the shoulder meets the sleeve. You're gonna make sure that you wear that tanker jacket zipped up to mid chest. Too many cadets walk around with their tanker jacket barely zipped up at the bottom by their belly, or they zip it up all the way to their neck and you can't see the khaki shirt and white skivvy shirt underneath. So mid chest is the rule of thumb for your tanker jacket. You don't have to worry about the sweater, but if you ever see a Marine in a blue sweater or a green sweater for service uniforms, their rank is placed on their epaulets for enlisted Marines. That's the, the Marine on the right who has the gold rank insignia a quarter of an inch from the seam. For your tanker jackets and your sweaters, a quarter of an inch from the shoulder seam where the shoulder meets the sleeve. Officers, they're gonna wear their collar or their rank on their collar just like they normally would for a blue sweater. But if they have a tanker jacket, even though they still wear their rank on their collar, they also have to put rank on their epaulets for their tanker jackets. In 2014, the new female dress blue coat got an overhaul and the new dress blue coat for females is being issued at Paris Island currently. But as of October 1st, 2022, the new female dress blue coat will become the female dress blue coat and it will take place and replace 
the old dress blue coat. It's currently available for purchase at a Marine's expense, but Marines with the old jacket will wear the current coat until it becomes unserviceable, and then they will replace it with a new version of the coat with their clothing allowance. Now, our inventory may reflect old dress blue coats. As our old dress blue coats for females and the ROTC program become unserviceable and new coats are purchased, the new dress blue coat will be the one that replaces uh, the old coat in the inventory. Here you can see that the new female dress blue coat is very similar to the male coat in that it has the high leather neck type collar. It has the long straight blues piping, the need for a white dress shirt underneath and a neck tab are no longer needed. And the form fitting look that the males have is the same design as the females. There are no pockets, however, but the seams are similar to the khaki shirt. And that's in order to accommodate a fe different females bust size and waist size. Just like the male dress blue coat is a form-fitting uniform, the females is the same. Um, but the significant difference is there are no pockets. So that's it for our dress blue uniforms, our dressy, fancy, snazzy, ceremonial type uniforms. Let's roll into our daily wear, often referred to as service uniforms. Just like your dress blue uniforms, your service uniforms are categorized by the phonetic alphabet as well. Let's talk about the service alpha uniform first. The service alpha uniform is worn with a green coat, green trousers, and a long sleeve khaki shirt. If you're a male, you're going to wear a tie. If you're a female, you're going to wear a neck tab. All of the requirements for the female skirts as it relates to being optional to be worn by yourself or in formation having to change to trousers apply to the service uniform as well. Now, in a service alpha uniform, your unit leader is going to tell you one of two covers to wear, a cover meaning a hat. You're going to either take off that white crown and replace it with a green one on your green barracks cover, or for you here in ROTC, you're going to wear the garrison cover, which honestly is what most Marines wear because it's kind of a pain in the butt to take that white crown off and replace it with the green one on your barracks cover. But when I say garrison cover, that's the thin one that uh, often looks like a Krispy Kreme donut employee's hat. You will only wear ribbons and or shooting badges with your service uniform. No Marine is allowed to wear medals with any version of the green service uniforms. So when do I get to wear my service green alphas, service alphas? I'm allowed to wear it as a uniform of the day, which is quite often. I'm allowed to wear it when I'm reporting to a new command, a unit, or assignment. 99% of the time, it's going to be mandatory that you wear this uniform when you go from your new duty station, from your old duty station to a new duty station. They are very form fitting and we want to make sure that when you check into a new unit that you don't look like a fart sack full of doorknobs and uniform. They can be worn in parades, ceremonies, and uh, events where if dress blues is not quite appropriate, but maybe service uniforms are, then you could wear them in those types of parades and ceremonies. They are allowed to be worn for leave and liberty. Here's a picture of your service alpha uniform for officers and enlisted. A big difference within the blouse of the male enlisted and male officer is that the officers have pleated pockets and the enlisted pockets are sewn down. Don't ask me why that is. It's just an easy identifier between the two uniforms, officer enlisted. But, you know, reality is I'm not really looking at a pocket. I'm looking at chevrons on the sleeve or brass on the collar. And that's going to be an easy identifier for me. Females, you can see that your uniform is virtually identical with the exception of a skirt as optional wear. Um, the neck tab simply replaces the neck tie. So the best way to remember this is very similar to your dress uniforms. I am going to remove a heavier or more prominent piece of 
clothing and replace it with something lighter. So your service Bravos, all you're gonna do is simply take off your coat, that's it. I wear a long sleeve khaki shirt, I wear a necktie or a neck tab if I'm a female, I wear green trousers and the skirt options are the same. The cover options are the same. The ribbons are the same. Now, if I am designated to wear service alphas, I'm gonna wear my ribbons and badges on the coat. Once I get to work, if we're in an office setting or if we're gonna have a meeting and the commander says, all right, well, we're, we're gonna wear Bravos for the rest of the day, then all you gotta do is take your coat off, hang it up on the coat rack, and even though you don't have ribbons and badges on underneath, you're still technically in service Bravos. I have had Marines who were told to wear service Alphas to work and that we were going to wear Bravos for the remainder of the day. And they put a set of ribbons and badges on their khaki shirt and then put their coat on top of it also with ribbons and badges and that tore up the ribbons and badges underneath. It was the silliest thing I ever seen. Don't wear ribbons and badges on your shirt and then put your green coat on top of it. That's just dumb. Service Bravos can be worn as a uniform of the day. They can be worn for parades and ceremonies, but uh, if another uniform is deemed more appropriate, then so be it. You are allowed to wear your Service Bravos for leave and liberty. And this is a very common uniform like your Service Charlies we'll talk about in a second where Marines are wearing it to and from work because that's the uniform of the day. Starting from head to toe, you'll see that they are wearing either the barracks cover, which is the big framed cover that the female officer is wearing, or the garrison cover, which is the one that you will wear as a cadet. Long sleeve khaki shirt, tie or neck tab, trousers or skirt. Now we're gonna talk about the uniform that you will wear other than camis here in ROTC the most. And that is your Service Charlie or Service C uniform. Pay very close attention because this is the one that will apply to you as a cadet the most. Short sleeve khaki shirt, green trousers for males and females because we don't issue a skirt here in ROTC. The skirt option, is there for female Marines, and if a female Marine wants to wear a green skirt in service Charlies, everything we've already talked about applies here as well. You will wear a green barracks cover. As a cadet, you're gonna wear the green garrison cover. Ribbons you will wear, or ribbons and badges you will wear, depending on what is designated by the unit commander, by the uh, senior Marine instructor, or my The occasions for wear, are as the uniform of the day, which is at least once a week here in ROTC. You can wear it in parade and ceremonies, uh, where a dress blues would not be uh, appropriate, and you can wear it for leave and liberty. You will wear your service uniform from home to school and then back again. But you, as a cadet, are not allowed to go out in town and show off any of your ROTC uniforms, period, the end. Unless it's a public event where we, being the senior Marine instructor or the Marine instructor, designate you to wear that e uniform for an event. Don't think that because all of these slides say authorized for leave and liberty, that that applies to you. Service Charlie uniform for officer and enlisted. You'll see the officers wear their rank insignia on the collar. Enlisted Marines wear their rank insignia on their sleeve. You as a cadet, regardless of officer and enlisted, will wear your rank insignia on the collar. You can take a look at the, on the right that the women Marines are not wearing a white skivvy shirt. You have the option to or not to wear a white skivvy shirt if you are a female cadet with your khaki shirt, just like female Marines are. Moving down the ladder for hierarchy of uniforms, we've talked about dress blues. And then the second category is service. Now let's talk about our utility uniform, the Marine Corps Combat Utility Uniform, AKA Digital Camis. So what does the Marine Corps Combat Utility Uniform, AKA Camis, consist of? Marines are gonna get issued either a woodland, which is the green, or a desert, 
MARPAC uniform. They'll get a blouse, a set of trousers, and they will wear a Marine Corps martial arts belt. Now you will wear a web belt. You're gonna get issued a cover. Now Marines are also issued a boonie cover, which is kind of like a fisherman's hat that we wear on certain occasions where we're training uh, with very light gear and it prevents sunburn and things like that. You're not gonna get issued a boonie cover while you're here. Regardless of whether you wear desert or woodland, you're gonna have a green skivvy shirt. There was a period of time where Marines were issued brown t-shirts, but money's money and Uncle Sam likes to pinch pennies every now and then. So we went away from wearing brown and we went back to everybody wearing green skivvy shirts all the time. Now, your socks, you have a choice of an olive drab, which is kind of like a green, a coyote, which is like a cross between green and brown, or black socks. Depending on what our inventory is at the time, we'll determine whether or not you're issued uh, green, coyote, or black socks. You will be issued, and Marines will wear, hot or cold weather Marine Corps issued boots only. The issued boots has an eagle glove and anchor emblazoned on the side of the outer heel of each boot. You're not allowed, only on special occasions, I should say, uh, uh, to wear anything other than an issued boot. For our giant Sasquatch feet type cadets, we will make exceptions, but that's a case by case basis. There are no differences between officer and enlisted camouflage utility uniforms. There are no differences between male and female camouflage utility uniforms. They're all the same. You, like I mentioned earlier, will roll your sleeves in the summer and you will have sleeves down in the winter because that's seasonal. When am I allowed to wear my camis? Not for much other than work. I will wear them for combat or field training exercises. I'm gonna wear them to work as the uniform of the day I'm gonna wear them to and from my space or my work environment only. I am not allowed to wear my uniforms out in town as a Marine or a cadet. I'm not allowed to wear my camouflage, I should say, utility uniforms out as a Marine. If I am coming from my house to the base, I'm allowed to wear my utilities. Only in the case of an emergency, am I allowed to stop, like a flat tire or something like that? Uh, I better not be stopping for gas. I should have filled up the night prior. You are not allowed to wear your uniform, your camouflage utility uniform for anything other than work. I don't get to go to the dance club as a Marine in my camis that I've been wearing all day underneath a seven ton truck covered in oil. Just not a thing. Although sometimes Marines try it. Those that do try to wear their camouflage utility uniforms out in town are easily spottable because you're not camouflaged at a gas station. You're not in the woods, so I can see you from a mile away and you're gonna get snatched up by some uh, hard charging Sergeant Major or Corporal. So one of the things that we're gonna focus on here in ROTC is how well, how tight and how high you roll your sleeves. And we're gonna focus on how smooth and tapered your trousers are. We're gonna talk about how to blouse your trousers at the bottom using boot bands and uh, how rolling your sleeves and blousing your trousers properly present a clean and neat appearance. Although it might be weird to classify a pair of running shorts and t-shirt as a uniform item, your physical training uniform falls under the utility category of your uniforms. Again, dress uniforms, service uniforms, and utility uniforms. PT gear falls under the utility category. So what does the physical training uniform, AKA PT gear, consist of? Your green issued PT shorts, a standard green undershirt. You're gonna get issued a sweat top or sweat bottom as a cadet. Marines nowadays get issued a green running suit. Those are not authorized for cadets you are gonna have to wear running shoes or cross training shoes. And from time to time, you will be allowed to wear boots, but it's prescribed by the commander, the senior re-instructor, 
or the marine instructor. Now, why would you wear boots with a green pair of shorts and a green shirt? When we try to build our physical fitness, we'll start off wearing running shoes. But if I want to introduce um, a combat utility uniform type PT training evolution, I'm going to add the boots first. So we'll go run for a little while with our boots and boot socks with just the green shorts and the shirt. And then next thing you know, we're going to put on our trousers and go run with trousers, then our blouse. And the next time we run, we're going to have a pack. And the next time we're going to have a rifle and so on and so forth. You as a cadet might not have an opportunity to get issued a beanie and gloves. It depends on what's in the inventory at the time. But Marines, if the commander says, hey, it's freezing outside, we're going to wear our digital, I'm sorry, our coyote headgear and our coyote colored gloves. Uh, you can wear that for PT gear. No Marine or cadet is allowed to wear their PT gear on leave or liberty. Period. The end. Only the running suit and sweatshirt are authorized for non-PT civilian attire. You as a cadet, like I said, don't get to wear anything in your uniform items out in town. But there will be times where we will ask you, maybe for a community service event uh, or a public event, where the uniform might not be appropriate for Cammies or Charlies, We'll tell you, hey, everybody show up at this particular event in blue jeans and your green issued sweatshirt. The sweatshirt and the jacket are authorized as civilian attire, but no other item of your PT uniform is allowed for civilian attire wear. Organizational PT gear is the type of uniform that's authorized by the commander. So our PT gear nine times out of ten is just going to be a green shirt but in the marine corps drill instructors are identified by their colored shirt uh, recruiters are identified by colored shirt so there are a lot of times where you will get issued that unit might issue a unit t-shirt and they want you to wear it for a unit run. You can see here in the picture that everybody's got red shirts on because that identifies that particular unit and they want to look cool, I guess. We have that cool factor built into our program as well. So if you're a mid-range physical fitness guru, then you could earn a yellow PT shirt. If you're a PT specimen, then you could earn a black unit PT shirt. We have our drill team shirts, our rifle team shirts, etc. So depending on what we want to wear for uniformity, we'll determine what kind of quote-unquote organizational PT gear we're authorized. You can mix and match all the components per the commander's guidance, but you cannot wear sweats with the running suit. This is really for Marines, not really for you, but if you see a Marine out in town who has sweat bottoms and a running suit top or vice versa, then uh, that Marine is wrong. So here's a picture of everything I've been yapping about for a few minutes as it relates to PT gear. 99% of the time, you're going to be wearing what the Marine on the far left is wearing. And that's simply a green t-shirt, green shorts, and your running shoes or CrossFit shoes. The only socks authorized for cadets and Marines are a solid black, solid white, or solid gray type socks. You're not wearing knee-high socks. You're not wearing SpongeBob socks. You're not wearing anything colorful or flamboyant. If you've got a solid black, gray, or green, I'm sorry, black, gray, or white sock, but it just happens to have a very small brand logo on it, eh, don't worry about it. You can wear those. But you will do extra PT. If you show up to our physical training events with rainbow colored socks or uh, Pikachu socks in uniform, what you will wear on cold days, and we will tell you when it's a cold day, you don't make that determination, is the young lady in the middle, the sweat top and the sweat bottom. And then you'll see the Marine issued PT gear on the right for cold weather, which is the current running suit. That weird little cap on the left is a beanie. And if we have it in inventory, we'll issue it. If we don't, we won't. 
So that's about it. It's a lot to take in. You need to focus on all of the differences between the uniforms. You need to hyper-focus on which uniforms apply to you as a cadet. And for testing purposes and for daily routine purposes, you need to understand that there are three categories of Marine Corps uniforms. Dress, service, and utility. What I'd like to leave you with is something that's near and dear to my heart. And that's that wearing the uniform should be a matter of personal pride to all Marine Corps Junior ROTC cadets. By your personal appearance, you set an example of orderliness and conformity to our uniform regulations. Your personal appearance in uniform should project the image to others that you are a part of the world's finest Marine Corps Junior ROTC organization. Take pride in yourself and the uniform that you will have earned in this program all day, every day, throughout your school hours here in Mount Juliet High School. No matter what class you're in, you need to make sure that you are setting a proper example, that you are behaving in uniform, that you are wearing a uniform properly, that you are not disrespecting the Marine Corps and the hundreds of thousands of Marines who have given their lives to allow you and I to wear this uniform. Respect it, respect others, and if you see a cadet not wearing their uniform properly, you have an obligation to correct them, regardless of the LE level. If you see a cadet misbehaving in or out of uniform, you have an obligation to correct them because any behavior that is counter to good order and discipline brings discredit upon you and our uniform. I hope you've learned something today and I hope that you take this opportunity to refresh yourself on all requirements needed for testing and evaluation. Simplify.